Good morning and welcome to the Peorian. I'm your host, Paul Gordon. You know, it's probably a pretty good bet that when John Tanner bought an 80-acre farm several miles north of Peoria 65 years ago, he didn't think it would become what it is today. Tanner's Orchard, of course, is one of the top family destinations in the Peoria area from about the end of July through most of autumn. And it's not just for the apples that grow there. Oh, you can still go out there and pick your own apples and pumpkins in the fall. But what really makes Tanner's the place to go every fall are all the attractions. Besides the orchard, it includes a corn maze that is anywhere from 1.2 miles to 2 miles long, depending on which path you take. There's the one-of-a-kind market where apples, pumpkins, jams, apple butter, and gourmet foods are sold. There's the adjacent bakery where you can buy amazing goodies. Have you ever tried their apple cider donuts? Now this year they're going to have pumpkin apple cider donuts? <laughs> and then of course there's the playground that includes long slides and pony rides. There's the harvest hall, farm animals, pedal cars, and a duck pond. It's all good family fun. But to the Tanner family, it's a way of life. With the third, fourth, and fifth generations now bringing that fun to you every year. Current owners Richard and Marilyn Tanner join me today and they'll give us some history, talk about the present at the orchard, and discuss the future of Tanner's Orchard when we come back. Welcome back to the Peorian. My guests today are Richard and Marilyn Tanner, the owners of Tanner's Orchard near Spear, which is celebrating its 65th anniversary this season. The new season opens tomorrow, isn't that correct? Tomorrow, July 23rd. Correct. Yes. Yeah, and I'm 67. <laughs> so you were two years so old. I was when two years old out. when we moved out to the farm. Well, let's get the nuts and bolts out of the way okay. first, if we could. What are the hours for the park, for the orchard? In July and August, they're 8 to 5, Monday through Saturday. Okay. In Close September and October, it's 8 to 8, 8 days a week. 8 days a week? Well, it <laughs> seems when, that when, way, when, at least. When you're in the... <laughs> when you, <laughs> it seems that way, yes. <laughs> so it's in September, then, that you're open? Yes. Okay. Seven days a Seven week. Seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah. week. Okay. What is there to do at the orchard right now? When people co come out when the season opens tomorrow, what? Well, the, for the first whole week, we're celebrating our 65th year, so we're mm -hmm. giving free cider donuts and coffee away, or iced tea. And um, the playground will be open. It might be a little warm out there, but we will have noon lunches. We've expanded um, our lunch area. We now have a garden dining room. Okay. Enclose the restrooms that are inside and um, a waterfall. Is the garden dining room new? Something new? Yes. Huh? Brand new this year. Okay, and the waterfall, where is that at? Well, we had a waterfall outside, okay. and we just built this, which was Richard's idea, to build it right over the top of the restrooms and the waterfall, and so now it expanded our dining area, and we have indoor restrooms. Okay. Now, the apples aren't ready to pick yet. Not yet. Not yet. yet. How much longer? It'll be around the middle of September. Oh, not, not until the, then? Yeah. Uh, we'll hope to have some earlier apples, but uh, we won't open the orchard for you to pick your own until okay. later. Okay. But right now, you said that the playground is open, so parents, families can yeah. come out they and enjoy They can come out. In mm. July and August, we usually don't, don't charge anything for the playground except if the barrel train is running. On Grandparents' Day, it will be. What is uh, Grandparents' Day? When is Grandparents' Day? Um, August. It's in August. It's I think it's August. the second second weekend of August. I guess I should mention too right now. Then, for more information about the events and the scheduling, what is your website? Tannersorchard.com. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just, and and we have pancake and uh, peach breakfast in August for two Saturdays and the Grandparents' Day, and then we also have a tea party lunch in the last Saturday of August. Okay. Are there other uh, events to coincide with the 65th that we haven't mentioned yet? Um, not really. Just giving away the donuts and the uh, uh, coffee so that, I could, that full week. So I'll be able to come out any day that first week? Any day that first week and get a free donut. Just one? Well, 
There'll be a tray of them there. <laughs> if you're really hungry, you can have two or three. Yeah, yeah. Is the yeah. maize open now? No, the maize will not open until Labor Day weekend. Okay. The corn's got to grow. Okay. Uh, we just planted it two weeks ago. It's only about four inches high right now. So we plant it late so it stays green late into October. Oh. Uh, the big concern is if it dries up too much, you have mm -hmm. a fire hazard. Okay. Because dry corn can burn pretty fast. Do you use the same pattern for the maize every year or do you change it? No, it's changed every year. Okay. Mm -hmm. who, do, who designs it? Uh, that's kind of a secret. <laughs> <laughs> how long did it take you to learn how to, to do a maze? Uh, we, we hire it done. Okay. Uh, we, have a, we, we pick out the designs and then a gentleman from Idaho comes in and that's his main job is to cut corn mazes. And it's all done GPS. He's got a nice little tractor with an air-conditioned cab <laughs> and lights and he can go in any time, day or night. And he doesn't even it. have to steer it, it just goes. Because it's all computerized. Oh, wow. Got auto steer on it and just... Technology yeah. is amazing, yeah, isn't it? Is. What would you say that is the biggest attraction these days? Um, well... The whole farm. It's the whole farm. The whole farm. <laughs> we, we try to have something for all family members. Okay. Grandpas, grandparents, grandchildren, and even teens. We have, you know, a little barrel train ride for the young kids, and we have pedal race cars for the, uh, well, they're not really race cars, they're kind of, a, kind, kind of a pedal car, pedal and a, car, a little yeah. track for the older teens, and <laughs> for mom and dad to ride around on too, if they. If the mom and dad could fit in, I couldn't yeah. fit in one. Oh, well, we've got some bigger cars that mom and dad can fit in, and the uh, kids can sit on the front. Oh, yeah. wow, yeah. that mm -hmm. sounds like fun. Last year we added a, a real caboose, Burlington Northern, we, we uh, restored it, and so that's been a real nice attraction. You can go in it and see how, you know, caboose is a thing of the past. Yes. And this year we're adding, um, it's called a spider web. And it's all this rope that's woven so it looks like a big spider web. And the kids can climb on that. Oh. Wow. They can play <laughs> Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can play Spider-Man, right. When we come back we're going to talk about the history of Tanner's Orchard. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Peorian. I'm with Richard and Marilyn Tanner, owners of Tanner's Orchard. Richard, you're the third generation Tanner at the orchard, am I right? Uh, no, I'm the second at the orchard, but the third that's in the orchard business. Okay. My grandfather had an apple orchard between Bloomington and Peoria near Deer Creek, Illinois. Okay. And my father bought the farm where we are now in 1947, and I was about two years old when we moved out there. I can just barely remember living in a basement house at the time. A basement house? Yes. Okay. Why Spear? Uh, the, the farm that my dad bought, he, he was looking for a farm along a paved road. That was okay. his main priority. And when he found this farm, it already had 20 acres of trees that were about eight years old. So the first year he harvested about a half a bushel of apples off the whole 20 acres. Wow. And he says it never could have done what he did if the trees weren't planted when he bought the farm. Okay. Has, was it always the intent then for it to be an orchard? Yes, my father always wanted to be in be an orchard business. Okay. At, the, at that time when he bought the farm, it wasn't the norm for parents to help their children get into the farming business mm -hmm. like it is today, or it has been. Uh, and he was somewhat of a demanding landlord, you might say, from what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Well, whatever happened to the original orchard near uh, Deer Creek? It's still in the family, but it's bulldozed out, and it's farm ground now. Okay. And leased or? It's uh, th my cousin farms it yet. Okay. And why was it important to have a, a paved road? Uh, that orchard was five miles back on a dirt, dirt road where in the rainy season when it rained, you had oh. ruts, and it was pretty nasty back there. It was back in the hills. 
even for the family, let yeah. alone anybody wanted to. Yeah, so, so he wanted on a paved road so that in the fall and even in the winter time, he could get the apples to town and to the markets. Mm -hmm. How many acres do you have now? We have about 40 acres of apple trees. Okay, so t double what it was? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, how often, do you ever have to replace the trees? Yes, we do. Um, it depends on the trees, the varieties. Okay. Uh, and our, whether we make a mistake or not, we've made some mistakes and we've replaced the trees in about 10 years, five to 10 years. Other years, uh, times we expect to get about 20 to 25 years out of a tree. Hmm. Okay. Uh, when was the decision made to make the orchard into what it is today? Uh, that was probably back in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, that's when Walmart and the big grocery stores come in. Mm -hmm. We were selling, if people remember, Thompson's Food Basket here in Peoria. Yeah. We sold a lot of apples to them, and we sold a lot to Kroger, uh, direct store delivery stuff. But then after Thompson's went out, uh, they, the bigger stores wanted uh, deliveries to their central distribution points. Mm -hmm. And they wanted truckloads, which we couldn't hardly supply. So we decided we had to do something different. Okay. And was it an almost an, in, an instant success? Well, it, it happened over a period of time. We could see the wholesale markets declining. And we, we knew we had to do something different to get people coming out to the farm. And at that time, uh, the farmer's market started up in Peoria. Uh -huh. And we went to those. The first ones were on Fulton Street. Okay. Remember those days, Paul? No, I'm, I haven't been here that long, but I've been told about them. <laughs> okay. And then we moved up to Metro okay. at the farmer's market. Uh, we took a lot of names and addresses, and we started sending a newsletter out in the early 80s uh, to get people come to the farm, and that worked very well. How long have you had the uh, playground and the restaurant and the bakery? Uh, the bakery, we started that probably in... 78, 79, okay. we started doing apple pies and cider donuts then. Okay. And it just kind of expanded. People were wanting more. They were wanting to eat on a farm. And, and it's just like any business. You do what the customer wants. Has it grown bigger than you ever expected it to? Yes, it has. It scares me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to take a break now for messages from some of our sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what is planned for Tanner's Orchard in the future. The first here is our own Kevin. Hey, guess what? I have a brand new segment this week, and it's called Lesser Known Works by Greater Known Authors. That's where I'll take a look at great lesser known novels written by great authors who are known for other more popular works. First off, George Orwell. Now, everyone who went to public school in America has at least a passing knowledge of Orwell's most famous novels, 1984 and Animal Farm. The plots to those books are familiar to everyone. There are pigs that take over a farm in the future with older siblings or something, under the motto, all animals are delicious. And while there are undoubtedly great pieces of fiction and satire in the tradition of Twain and Swift, perhaps Orwell's greatest novels are works that people haven't even read, let alone heard of. The first is Down and Out in Paris and London, which was Orwell's first novel. It chronicles the life of a penniless British writer, Orwell, who finds himself rapidly descending into the seedy heart of two great European capitals. As a dishwasher in Paris, he provides a riveting behind-the-scenes account of the filthy kitchens in posh French restaurants. And in London, he finds himself in the world of street dwellers and charity shelters. He finds himself conning landlords and negotiating with pawnbrokers as he searches for work, food, and a home, but with a clarity and wry humor that is all Orwell. The novel itself is only 213 pages, so it's a relatively quick read. The, le the second lesser-known work is Homage to Catalonia, which details Orwell's experience on the front line of the Spanish Civil War. While Hemingway was over there writing screenplays and rolling around with women, Orwell was actually on the front lines and was shot through the neck, but thankfully survived. This book tells the story and is a tribute to those who died in what he called the fight for common decency. He wrote that people frequently told him a man who is hit through the neck and survives is the luckiest creature alive, but that he personally thought, quote, it would be even luckier not to be hit at all, unquote. That, my friends, is Orwell at his finest. And at 244 pages, it's not a terribly long read. So there you have it, Down and Out in Paris and London, and an homage to Catalonia by George Orwell, two lesser known works by a greater known author, and a brand new segment brought to you by me. And as always, you're welcome. I'm back talking with Richard and Marilyn Tanner about Tanner's Orchard, which opens its 65th season tomorrow. Before the break, you mentioned that 
you were affected, adversely affected, when Thompson's closed and, and when bigger stores such as Walmart came in and, and because you were unable to meet their demands. What about now? You, you don't want to, do you? I mean, if... Well, right now we're able to retail everything that we grow on the farm. So we do not have to depend on wholesale markets anymore. Okay. Uh, there was a time we hauled apples to Chicago and St. Louis. You made the comment during the break, I, I forget how you worded it, but everything you grow, you sell out of We area. sell out the front door, everything. Okay. So we don't have to do any wholesale and um, like all of our baked goods are, you know, the bakery and the donut machines going every day. And that's a good position to be in then, right? Yes. You we we feel very uh, blessed to be in this position. And um, yeah. we have two children that are in business with us mm -hmm. and a son-in-law, a daughter and a uh, son and a son-in-law. And they're very much involved in it. So we hope that it continues. We got a lot of little grandchildren coming up. Well, you know, I, I will admit it's been a, a several years since I've been out there. But I used to come out there with my children and then later grandchildren. I noticed on your website that, that you've added several attractions since the last time I was there. How often do you add attractions? Well, we try to add something new every year. Okay. Um, you know, like Richard said, we, we plant new trees almost every year, mm -hmm. new varieties. Uh, last year we added the caboose on the playground. It's a real Burlington Northern, real caboose. It was quite the... A project. <laughs> it was pri quite the project to get it all set and restored. And uh, we have a Caterpillar tractor out there, an old one, a school bus, and uh, the spider. We're adding new, it's like a rope spider web that kids can climb on. And we have pedal cars for, uh, or go karts for the, you know, the teens and the, and the adults. And then this year we added the new dining area okay. with the um, waterfall and in indoor restrooms. When you do either add or subtract something, what causes you to do so? Do you just see what's the most popular and, or do people make suggestions to you what they would like to see? We, we do have suggestions from um, some of our customers, you know, well, in September and October we're we're serving a lot of noon lunches. It okay. averaged last year 300, Monday through Friday every 300 day. 300 a day? 300 a day. So the dining was, was a problem. So we knew we needed to do something with that. And then with the restrooms being outside in a little block building, um, people wanted those, you know, that was especially, you know, like during the week they had to walk all the way around the mm -hmm. building to go to the restroom. So we, we enclosed all that and enclose the waterfall, so now we have this garden dining area. So you're constantly making capital improvements as well. Yes, yes, yes. And eventually, you know, we want to redo part of another part of the building, but in the market, you know, we're always getting different pieces of antique furniture or, you know, like today, the girls are working down there doing displays and we're switching things around and, and, um, just making improvements all the time, making it easier for the people, the customers to get around. Mm -hmm. What would you say would, is going to be, what do you project will be your most popular attraction this year? The, indoor restrooms. The indoor, re indoor <laughs> restrooms. <laughs> for us older people like me. <laughs> See, like during the week, we, we do get a lot of retired people come for lunch. Okay. And we have a lot of nursing homes to come bring people out for lunch or just for pie and coffee during the fall? Because we are wheelchair accessible. It's okay. all on one level. Yeah. So that makes a difference. The uh, baked goods, of course, include your apple cider donuts. Is that still your most popular? Yes. The apple cider donuts are the most popular, and this year we are going to make pumpkin apple cider donuts. I told my daughter, maybe just pumpkin cider, and she says, Mom, Everybody's going to want, want pumpkin cider then. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to have pumpkin apple cider donuts. Okay. That's what we're going to name them. 
what flavor dominates? The pumpkin. Does it really? Yeah, mm -hmm. the pumpkin will dominate. And okay. that, that'll be a very good thing. Another thing new that we've added this year is a new snack shack, which oh. is open on weekends in September and October. Okay. We, we worked out of this little trailer like <laughs> and did a real good job our daughter wanted that and so now um we had some friends build us a eight by twelve snack shack <laughs> so we will be adding more food out there also should we expect to see uh tanner's orchard around for a lot longer we should hope so okay we've got the next generation coming and uh they're saying that their children want to be into it or they would like their children to be in it okay so it hopefully it extends quite a few more years. Thank you folks for joining us today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Hope you have enjoyed today's program and are planning your next trip out to Tanner's Orchard. I know I am. It's a worth a trip worth taking if only for those apple cider donuts. Remember you can see this and other episodes of the Peorian on our website thepeorian.com and tune in for another episode next Sunday at 8 a.m. on WHOI TV and on our website. Have a good week. Thank mm -hmm. you.